Today we are going to be talking about roundabouts. First we will cover some background on roundabouts. The first roundabout to be implemented in the United States highway system was built in 1904. Older, non-conforming traffic circles were used until the 1950s when problems started to arise. One problem with, with non-conforming traffic circles was that they would often be the cause of traffic jams. This is due to many things including the right-of-way being given to entering vehicles, entryways being regulated by stop signs or stop lights, and as we see in the Columbus Circle in New York City, through roads would cut through the center of the circle. Safety was another concern. Entry roads would often be tangent to the circle, causing cars to enter with speeds too high to safely make the turn. Pedestrian crossing was also a safety issue. As we see in the DuPont Circle in Washington, D.C., pedestrians cross through the center of the circle which jams traffic and is dangerous to cross traffic. Lastly, cars would be permitted to park on the circle, causing congestion. We see cars parking here on the Place Charlet de Gaulle in Paris. Roundabouts have come a long way since these non-conforming circles and help traffic move smoothly through intersections today. For the most part, all roundabouts generally have a similar basic form and have the same features. Where they differ is when designing the parameters of roundabouts that are based on the largest vehicles that will be traveling through that intersection, the necessary maneuvering requirements for the largest vehicle to travel through safely and efficiently, and the speeding environment and desired capacity at each individual site. While the basic layout of roundabout remains the same, minor changes are made in the geometric design in order to achieve safety and capacity. As you can see, this is a basic geometry shape along the elements included in the roundabout. As you can take note, there are many measurements to take into account when designing for the parameters, such as exit and entry radius, the width of both the exit and entry lanes, the departure of approach lanes, and the width of the circulatory roadway. However, before the measurements and details of these values are defined, there are three fundamental elements that first must be determined in the preliminary design stage. The optimal roundabout size, the optimal position, and the optimal alignment and arrangement of approach legs. One of the most influential and critical objectives in the order to achieve a safely in designing for an appropriate design speed for vehicles that will hopefully, if will be assigned, reduce the relative speeds between conflict traffic streams. These speeds will be reduced by requiring vehicles to negotiate the roundabout along the curb path. Here's a table preference provided by the Federal Highway Administration that displays a recommended maximum entry design speed based on the various types of intersection sites categories. You can take note that the location, whether it be anti-rural area or a congested urban area, you can also note that the size of the curve radius and the number of lanes that contribute to the design speed. The roundabout brings is the reduction of collisions. As shown in the data provided by the Federal Highway Administration and Institute Highway, roundabouts provide a significant reduction in injury, pedestrian, and fatality collisions. But how is this possible? Well, roundabouts provide a geometry that allows smooth transition. The geometry only allows eight vehicle to vehicle conflicts and eight vehicle to pedestrian conflicts. On the other hand, four way intersections allow 32 vehicle to vehicle conflicts and 24 vehicle to pedestrian conflicts. Reduction of, of types of collisions is another advantage the roundabout offers. The geometry of roundabouts only allow merging collisions, while four-way intersections also allow head-on collisions as well as T-bone collisions. Thanks for watching and we hope you learned something today.